Yes. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time zone you're in. For anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Tim. Uh, I've been working on the Kubernetes project um, more or less from the beginning. Uh, I mostly pay attention to things like networking, storage, nodes, multi-cluster APIs, and lower level things like that. I love to talk tech. Uh, I would love to talk with anybody. If you want to talk about Kubernetes or GKE or what's going on in networking, hit me up. That is not the topic today. Today, I want to spend some time talking about something a little squishier. Uh, so I've been incredibly Im uh, privileged to see the Kubernetes project grow from uh, a literal handful of people uh, that fit into one room uh, into the behemoth that it is today. Um, and I want to talk about what made that possible. So to do that, we need to go back to the beginning. So I couldn't find a picture of our first dev summit, so I picked something that looked uh, pretty close, at least to how I remember it. Um, it was a room filled with the very smartest people I had ever met. Every single person was singularly impressive uh, and an expert in something that I knew nothing about. And we're all focused on one thing, this Kubernetes thing, and how are we going to build it? Now, uh, looking at this picture, you might wonder, wonder which, which one am I? Well, I'm, I'm the guy taking the photo. Uh, so I want to talk about community. And anybody who has seen me talk before probably has seen me talk about community. Um, and uh, it's something that's very near and dear to me. Um, it is really at the heart of the project. There is no way that Kubernetes would be what it is without our community. But the community is not a thing or a person. It's the stuff in between the people. It's the stuff that glues us all together. Back in the old days when we fit in a single room, it was easy. We all knew each other. We knew each other's favorite topics and our areas uh, and our interests. And we trusted each other uh, to do the right thing. It's pretty easy to build trust when you've got a handful, maybe 20, 40 people who all know each other. Now, Kubernetes is one of the largest open source projects in history with tens of thousands of contributors uh, on almost every continent. I'm still waiting for somebody in Antarctica to let me know that they've contributed uh, and every single time zone on the planet. We have hundreds of sub projects. We have thousands of related spin-off projects. Uh, if you search GitHub, even tens of thousands, depending on, on how widely you cast that net. Uh, and this is staggering, amazing. Uh, but large communities are very, very different from small communities. They work differently, and they need different care and feeding, uh, and they need attention. Technology is easy by comparison. People are much more difficult. Dealing with people at this scale is both harder and easier than small groups uh, in various ways. It is much harder to trust people that you don't know. Uh, that is just the truth. It is much harder to communicate effectively. It is much harder to reach agreement. The larger the group, the harder it is. But it's easy to fall into us versus them, especially when we have literal competitors who are working together to build this project. Uh, it's much easier for us to forget something or to not include someone. Uh, it's much easier in this state to assume ill intent, to assume uh, maliciousness when it wasn't meant. I have personally, I admit it, I've personally fallen victim to every single one of these things. Every time we let ourselves fall into these patterns, it's a little fracture in our community. The good news is that a healthy community will eventually self-heal, but it takes time and it takes care and it takes attention and a willingness to act. Like so many things, uh, a little bit of self-awareness goes a long way. So I want to ask people today in our extended community, people who are here at KubeCon, who took the time out of their busy day to come and hear me blather on, uh, I want to ask you to think about a few things and to act with intention on those things. So here we go. Number one, I'm asking everybody here and everybody who watches this video and everybody who looks at the slide deck later to commit to making our community stronger. I need you to look for opportunities to fix those cracks rather than make them. 
I'm asking you to give people the benefit of the doubt. Be patient and give them the, uh, uh, trust them to be doing the right thing or to be meaning the right things uh, without being uh, mean. I'm asking you to over communicate on purpose. Do it because you know it has to be done. Because when you communicate with the people that you think of, you are almost always going to be missing somebody. So copy the mailing list or include that person who sent a comment um, and, and seek out their input. I'm asking everybody here to become aware of us, them language and groupthink uh, and try to avoid it at all costs. We should never be about teams or about my this or their that. It should always be about our efforts. And I'm asking you to look around and help somebody do the work that you could have done yourself. This is part of lifting up our community and, and building a deeper bench. And I'm asking everybody to say thank you. It's a really small thing, but recognizing the human on the other end of that screen is a huge deal. We're all busy, but it literally, it literally takes two seconds to add a thanks to your messages, and it totally changes the tone. It means so much, especially for the people who've been in the project for a long time, to just say thanks. Thanks for this pull request. Thanks for this issue. Uh, even if we're not going to merge it in the end, it makes such a huge difference. So just try to remember that there is a person receiving whatever it is that you're about to say. We are, frankly, at the hardest part of the project, and we will be for a while. We're in this trough. All the easy stuff is done. All the obvious ideas have already been considered or implemented. Uh, we have real users, right? We have some of the biggest companies in the world and banks who are managing your money and the stores where you buy everything uh, and, and websites that are serving traffic that you look at every day. And these users are a big part of our community. We need to treat them as precious. Their trust should be valued above everything else. Whatever features we've got in our system, if it exists, somebody is using it. Even if it was a, a gap between two features that defines some particular behavior, somebody is depending on it. There is no such thing as a safe breaking change anymore. Um, and this can be really painful as the project grows up because it means we have to slow down, and we have to be more careful, and be more thoughtful, and we have to really, really think through what any particular change uh, might mean. We don't have the robustness, the, the, the discipline in the project yet that we really need to have to make this easier. Uh, our processes are still evolving, and they're being defined by people, and very busy people who are also trying to you know, do work on the project. Uh, our tooling is getting better, Oh, gosh, think, think back just a year to where our tooling was, um, but the tools are not done. Um, the testing isn't where we want it to be. Uh, we have tons and tons of features, and they all interact with each other, and sometimes in really subtle ways. And every time somebody sends a change, we need to think about those things because our users are the most important thing. So the next topic, the next call to action is on ideas. We have more ideas for cool things we could do, more features that we could add uh, than we have hands on keyboards. Way, way more ideas. But even if we had infinite monkeys, we do not have the confidence in our ability as a project to absorb all of their work. So call to action number two is to chop wood and carry water. This has been part of our project's uh, mindset forever. It's one of our core values. Before you come in and build a new feature or uh, make some giant modification that adds some capability, I'm asking you to go fix a bug, improve a test, help something with the tooling, write a doc. If everybody stands down one rough spot, we can make it through this project, through this trough that we're in right now. Make yourself part of the community. Now, this means trying to do the right thing for our users, um, but also trying to do the right things for each other. Have patience, and going back to call to action number one, have patience with the project. I personally, I know exactly how frustrating it can be 
to try to get changes into Kubernetes, even small changes, even bug fixes. Uh, it can be it can be painful. This whole endeavor is a work in progress. So I'm asking everybody be patient and understanding, um, and and remember that the tragedy of the commons is a real thing. And if we don't all chop a little wood and carry a little water, then the whole project will not work. Now that might sound like I'm saying we should stop evolving the project, we should stop adding features to it, and that's not at all what I meant. Uh, a lot of the excitement around Kubernetes came from it being a new way of doing things. It was about where people wanted to go more than about where they were. And you know, as the systems mature, uh, it becomes very difficult to keep that property, right? You get calcified, you get stuck. Uh, I said it myself, we're slowing down, we're being more careful. But we need to keep evolving. We just need to make sure that the structures we build continue to be serviced and to support that evolution. Tests, bugs, cleanups, refactorings, corner cases, those are the really critical things that are going to make it possible to keep evolving. And not just evolving, but adding new stuff and growing and stretching out into new dimensions that we hadn't even thought of before. When you look at a thrilling skyscraper, remember that the vast, vast, vast majority of work that went into that skyscraper is all infrastructure. It's things that you never see. They're holding the whole thing in place. The last call to action I want to make, we need to skate to where the puck will be. This means looking to the future and not just reacting to where we are now. We can't do the same things we've done before. I know the community is full of people who've worked on other projects before and have done things in the past. And I myself have cited previous work and previous experience as reasons for doing things in Kubernetes. Um, but we should also be looking for real users and real use cases. We should not change ideas just for fun. We don't design to hypotheticals, but we do want to try to get ahead of the curve. We want to talk to our users and understand their real use cases, and we want to give them what they need, not just what they're asking for. Sometimes they ask for the thing that is obvious to them, but we can figure out the core thing that is actually at the heart of what they need. And I say this, and it makes it sound like we're smarter than everybody, uh, which is absolutely not true. At every step of the process, we need to be willing to reevaluate our own assumptions. Right? This thing that we assumed was correct, do we still think it's correct? Is, is all of our input still indicating that this is the right way to do things? And we have to remember that as we do all this, reliability and stability, those are features too. Maybe those are the most important features. In fact, uh, those are the sorts of features that nobody knows that you have them until you don't have them. And once you don't have them, you're pretty much dead. If we keep our eye on the puck and we know where it's going and we stay grounded in our users' needs, we will be okay. I am very confident in that. So wrapping it up, community is people. And I'm asking you all whether you are just just, quote, quote, a KubeCon attendee who's here to learn, or your regular contributor to Kubernetes, I need your help. Make our community stronger, chop some wood and carry some water, and skate to where the puck will be. And in keeping with my own guidelines, thank you very much for attending today. Um, I'm happy to answer questions here. We'll post the slides uh, soon. Um, and I'm happy to answer questions about this or other stuff if people want to go there. Thank you, Tim. Um, I wanted to give the opportunity to everybody who's participating. Uh, if you want to ask questions now about this topic, or maybe have an open conversation with ideas or comments that uh, were inspired uh, by some of these uh, concepts, uh, you're welcome to do that now. So I'm going to give that a few minutes, um, and otherwise uh, we can go to breakout rooms to do more one-on-one -on -one connecting. And I'm gonna stop the recording now.